What's up, nerdlings? Ah. <laughs> After the Grammys, I went to Austin, Texas to perform for the first time at South by Southwest with my band, Soulful Nerd. From Unfortunately, a lot of the footage that I shot at South by Southwest is missing because I lost one of the external flash drives that I put a lot of my video footage on and I haven't been able to recover it. But that's life, so I can just tell you what I took footage of. <laughs> I took footage of lots of the concerts I saw. Um, I saw Kalela, she was amazing. Uh, Emily King, fantastic show. Um, I saw La Femme. I really like La Femme. If you don't know about La Femme and you like electronic music, punk rock, it's hard to describe their music because it's not really one thing and I like music like that but when you listen to it there'll be elements of it that'll kind of remind you of disco but also punk rock and I don't know it just it's really cool music they have really cool sense of style and they're just really really fun and they're French I love French culture, French food, French people. Such a cool place. Um, we were discriminated against, me and the band. We waited for over an hour for a taxi. And I'm not just making this up. You know, sometimes people say, well, maybe you just had a bad night. There were lots of people at South by Southwest who were calling taxis, yes. However, an empty taxi that had a light lit on top of it passed us and on the next street stopped. Like I could see the cab. It was like maybe 20 steps away from me. It went to the next corner, stopped and picked up a young white couple. And I think maybe 30 minutes after that we found the cab. And uh, oh, it just, it's not right. You don't do people like that. I don't care if 10,000 black folks robbed you over the years. I'm not one of those 10,000. I'm just making that number up, I'm just saying. But that was the excuse we got from the cab driver that did pick us up, who was West African. I don't remember the country he's from. But he actually said himself, you know, I hate to say this, but you guys are lucky I picked y'all up. Like, seriously? I'm not I, I'm really upset when I recall this story because it's just wrong. It's just wrong. We were dressed really nicely. We just finished our performance. No, it wasn't performance day. I'm, I'm lying. But we were all dressed nice. I think it speaks to a larger issue, which is negative, the impact of negative images of minorities in the media when you see young guys that have baggy pants in a TV show or in a music video or wherever it's always coupled with some type of deviant behavior therefore it's subconsciously affecting how people see other blacks so when you see someone walking down the street, whether he has baggy jeans or not, like you have all of this emotional baggage 
that precedes you even talking to this person. And I've noticed it when I was in D.C. I've noticed it everywhere I've been in the world. Um, countries where most people say, oh, there's no racism here. Yes, there is. What it is is fear and ignorance, absolutely. The only way any of it will stop is if people start treating people the way they want to be treated. I did an interview at a radio station in DC called Bliss FM. It's uh, run by Rahim Devon, a really amazing R&B artist from DC. And one of my artist friends showed up at the taping, Tamika Love Jones, and she was just singing a little bit, kind of impromptu at the end of the interview, and I just started harmonizing with her, and we were sipping on a little wine. So I am en route to Bliss FM. It is a part of Studio 202, Rahim Devon's studio space in uh, Washington, D.C., where they have radio shows, um, live performances, promotional events, etc. And I'm being interviewed by The Seller, one of the radio shows here. So it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to talk about my album and my career, and we're going to have a live performance as well. I am at the wrong door. Okay. So we're going to go back. <laughs> Should be fun. I'm doing uh, I Won't Let It Go. The song from the TV show. I won't let it go. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna sing it just like that, too. Here we go. Here we go, huh? Like Maisha, where's the camera? Get the camera. Come yeah, yeah. Oh, babe. Yeah, 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 that's what I seen at the cell. And when you talk to me, I'm talking, yeah. baby. <laughs> when you moan and sweet and low. Mm. Wow. And when you touch me, that's when my feelings start to show. Oh, that's the time. Feel like making love to you better than I That's time. The key to every beautiful experience I've had in my life was, of course, preparation, skill-wise, making sure as a musician, you know the music, you've prepared vocally, you're exercising your voice regularly. But beyond that is really treating people with love and with kindness. Because people will remember not just how talented or how gifted you are, but how you made them feel when they were in your presence. I have been in the room with some people and we didn't even exchange words but I felt their energy and I didn't like it <laughs> and I never forgot that weird uncomfortable feeling I had in their presence when you love yourself and you love other people's people it opens up the floodgates for you to receive love back. And it's not like you're giving love to get it, but it's just a natural response. For example, if you're always in the presence of someone and they make you feel so cherished and so loved, you just feel compelled to give that love back to them. So as you're putting together your 
life plan or <laughs> your business plan, your marketing plan. Take some time to love somebody. To love somebody. To love somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, y'all.